so great to be able to be here to uh, talk with you about this very important topic. And I hope by the end of my talk, you will see that, well, you will raise it up in terms of your agenda. Um, so I'm the director for the Centre for Tobacco Control Research at the University of Auckland, and also uh, co-director with Associate Professor Chris Bullen of the New Zealand Tobacco Control Research Tūranga. The Tūranga was funded by the HRC, Health Research Council and Ministry of Health, to conduct research, commission research, on finding uh, a way to get us to smoke-free 2025. And we really need to look at innovative um, measures and interventions to get us there. And that was great talk, Paul, and uh, I just want to do a little advert. Uh, connecting people, uh, group stop smoking competition. We have a stand out there. Please come and visit us and find out how it works. And it does exactly what you are saying. Well, I hope it does. That all depends on you guys using it, of course, in your local communities. Now, uh, oh, hang on, push button hard, it says. Push button hard. I, I'm not going to go through this. I hope that all of you know what the ill effects of smoking are, although there are a large range of ill effects of smoking uh, while pregnant, so the woman smoking while pregnant. Um, unfortunately, a lot of our mums don't know the full range, and maybe you don't know the full range either, but I won't read them all out, uh, but there's some. And... There are ill effects uh, on the fetus as well, particularly retarded growth and all of the things that result from that. And then in babies as well, so they've been exposed to smoke in utero and then the effects go on into when they're, after, when they're born. Uh, that's if, they're, if they are born because still birth is one of the, um, and miscarriage. Um, and our Māori mums have a very high rate of miscarriage, but it's not recorded very well, it's a statistic that's sort of missing. And uh, a lot of Māori mums are not told that there is a connection between smoking and miscarriage, when they miscarry. So um, sudden infant death syndrome, lots of many common ones. Unfortunately, being exposed to smoke in utero has on, can have ongoing effects, so it increases the risk for many illnesses in childhood as well. And on into... Um, Later, have I got later? No, I didn't put that. But uh, increasing uh, uh, the likelihood of taking up smoking yourself when you, when you become 14, 15, 16, um, you know, when you grow up. And, yeah, it's... Um, I think it hasn't been focused on much because only a relatively small number of the population of a country smoke while pregnant. But uh, it has enormous effects when half or more than half of your population smoke while pregnant. And so for Māori, potentially 60% of our children are exposed to smoke in utero, and many of them have increased risk for many of those uh, effects. Uh, there are many effects on pregnancy itself, and then, and then they, they have to suffer through childhood and, and greater likelihood of infant illness. So this is smoking prevalence for Māori women. Uh, I tried to find the latest figures, and I tried to find the latest figures for Australia as well. I'm sorry, guys, if I got that wrong for your mob. Um, I just got what I could on the internet. So it's very important to look at, and this is usually not picked out, and that's why I wasn't able to pick it out, the prevalence rate for just women of childbearing age. So here we have, uh, for Māori women, you can see the concentration uh, of uh, smoking prevalence, especially it goes up there in the 25 to... But basically, women of childbearing age, from 15 there, say, through to 45, although we have some mums who are still having babes up to 50. But if you just look at the 15 to 45, that's where we have our highest rates of smoking prevalence. And for Māori women in that 25 to 34-year-old age group, we have smoking prevalence up to 55%. And unfortunately for um, our Indigenous sisters in Australia, um, they have similarly high rates. 
The rates for Pacific are not easy to find for just women of childbearing age. Um, so what I was able to find was only the smoking prevalence for women over 15 years of age, 23% uh, for New Zealand Pacific women, and that's possibly on the increase, so watch the space. In fact, you should watch the space for women around the world, uh, what has happened to Māori women. This is as smoking prevalence increases among women around the world, you will see smoking during pregnancy increasing as well. So for those groups, um, Pākehā New Zealanders and white Australians, where smoking prevalence in women is coming down, this is not so much a concern, although it's obviously a concern if women smoke while pregnant. And in the Pacific Islands, uh, thanks to the presentation yesterday, uh, obviously smoking prevalence among women ranges from 5% to 55%, depending on what island you're on. For New Zealand Asian women, uh, smoking is very, very low at only 2%, and for New Zealand European women, uh, that's 18%. Now, that's not just childbearing age. So smoking while pregnant, uh, sorry, if you look at... Māori mums and age of birth, so as Tom was saying yesterday, um, in Australia you have a very young indigenous population as we do here for Māori, so this is uh, births and you can see the concentration and it's matching up with when we have high smoking prevalence there. And that will be the same for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women as well, who um, the median age for registered birth is 24.8 years, six years lower than the median age for all women in Australia. So smoking while pregnant uh, in New Zealand, the figures, and these are not easy to come by either, they are not uh, collected in any kind of standardised way. So the data comes from the College of Midwives database, and that is not all births by any means, uh, but it's a fair proportion, and it does include a fair proportion in Māori, although there are a lot more Māori uh, births and the data is not accessible. So for all women, 18.4% smoke uh, while they're pregnant, and among Māori, 43.5%. This is smoking at first registration with elite maternity carer, and that's 2007 figures, so this is quite old. I hope the situation has improved, but as I said, very difficult to get the information. Uh, the smoking at first, well, I'll cover that later. In Australia, what I could find was that smoking while pregnant uh, um, among all women is about 14%, and we have a similarly high rate among Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women at 42% smoking during pregnancy. And for New Zealand Pacific, going back some time to find some, some statistic there, about 25% smoking during pregnancy, but it varies uh, widely by Pacific ethnicity. So just focusing on Māori is kind of like a case story. If we look at, uh, we, you've got to look at your background smoking prevalence for that women of childbearing age, so that group, and we have 49% uh, smoking in the background is the background prevalence, and then they get pregnant. And the next figure we, we're able to access is at 34%, uh, sorry, we've got 43.5% smoking at first registration with a midwife. So some are able to quit by the time they see the midwife. And then we have the next figure from the College of Midwives is that 34% are still smoking at discharge from the midwife, which is six to eight weeks after birth. Uh, so some might have taken up smoking again, or you know, this is just representing how few more have managed to quit while they were pregnant. So we have a potential cessation effect of 9.5%. Uh, so for your populations, you want to look at the background smoking prevalence rate for women of childbearing age, then try and find out how many are smoking at registration with a midwife, or find whatever statistics you can. And if you're not collecting them, why aren't we? That's uh, something we should be doing. As a further case study, this varies widely by area. So I'm just going to focus now uh, into uh, Northland of New Zealand, and I have some figures here from Mariah Mentor, Northland DHB, that she put together to show how bad the situation can be in 
So this is just the uh, admissions for delivery from February to April 2012. So that in that time, they had 465 admissions for delivery. 229 of them were Māori, so, you know, almost half. And um, 236 were non-Māori. Now, of them, 25% were current smokers. But uh, 43, 98 um, of the Māori women were current smokers, and only 17 of the non-Māori women were current smokers. So this is a real, you know, like microscopic look at the inequity that's, that exists in this country as I, and in Australia. It, it's a similar story. And that was at delivery, not at first registration with a midwife. So it's quite a high rate of smoking, um, even at that time, stage of pregnancy. So what are the opportunities to support women to not smoke while pregnant? The key strategy being used in New Zealand is the ABC strategy, so that every time uh, anyone, including pregnant women, meet with a health professional, they, uh, including midwives, they are asked if they, if they smoke. And the Ministry of Health target is that 90% of women who smoke will be offered brief advice, I hope it's not too brief, and uh, cessation support and or referral to a cessation service. Now in New Zealand we have about six specialised smoking cessation services for pregnant women, by no means uh, national coverage, just dotted around, and only about 1,800 to 2,000 women uh, access or are supported by those services a year, so it's a drop in the bucket. There, um, the first chance to help is at confirmation of pregnancy, and women in New Zealand, based on evidence we have, are still largely going to the GPs, uh, to their doctor's surgery, so they're getting that confirmation of pregnancy from the GP or the nurse. So I still see them as having a very key and primary role in reducing smoking while pregnant. The second chance is when they see a lead maternity care or they book in with a midwife. Now, one of the problems with that kind of logic model relying on that system to work is that we have Māori women uh, presenting late to a midwife and, and having low rates of engagement with the healthcare system in the first place. So 42% delay registration with a midwife until after the first trimester. So if they, and there's emerging evidence that there is insufficient support provided at the point of, of confirmation of pregnancy. So it could be many weeks or even months before a woman books in with a midwife and gets ABC from her and hopefully effective cessation support. But there are many barriers to delivering effective cessation support, and this is documented around the world that midwives have said the, the barriers they have, and we have the same evidence here, and I'm sure in Australia as well, uh, you've come across these same barriers. So they are perceived lack of time to cover all the topics that the lead maternity carrier needs to cover off with a woman when she's booking in with her. Uh, they also fear that advising a woman to stop smoking will be taken negatively, that she, the midwife, will be seen as uh, judgmental, and that that might um, put the woman, it will affect their relationship. And uh, there's a reluctance by the midwife, and this is very nice of them, uh, to, they don't want to induce guilt, and they don't want to add further pressure, and, uh, and add further restrictions to the many restrictions that newly pregnant mums have to uh, adjust to. Another barrier, particularly in New Zealand, and I'm not sure uh, how it is for you in Australia, um, is the continued use of the stages of change model and the, uh, you know, the pre-contemplation, contemplation, are they ready, and using that and applying that in practice with pregnant mums. Uh, it's not relevant to do so. Uh, you do not have time to wait for her to become ready. You only have a small window of opportunity to get her off the smoke immediately. And you must do everything you possibly can to do that. So it's not OK to go, oh, she's not ready, I'll see her in six months' time. Too late. And um, the other problem we have is thinking it's OK to just support a reduction to quit. You must get her off the smoke altogether. The evidence does not support that just reducing will reduce harm sufficiently, if at all. So uh, 
And this is an ongoing problem for us here. Another issue is, um, and I think, Paul, you sort of referred to this, and as did Nader, is smoke-free pummeling, a term I've sort of coined for what we think may be happening to smokers. They're being pummeled from every side, and particularly pregnant mums. So there's a perception that pregnant women who smoke suffer more stress because they smoke, the shame, the guilt, and that this is leading them to avoid health care and to avoid going to a midwife, especially if a midwife is telling them to get off the smoke or more likely to be saying, you must quit and you must quit for life. Um, and, and that they're going to keep getting that. So, and then this leads to this hard to reach. It causes them to become hard to reach. I'm going to come to that later. Uh, the, the lack of time and resources for follow-up cessation support has also been mentioned by midwives. And also there's a lack of knowledge of where to refer women to for support. And if there's only six specialised services, well, but they can always ring Quitline. There are plenty of cessation support throughout the country, and that should work for pregnant mums as well. The, um, and then there's a the perceived wide rejection uh, of, you know, that smoking is damaging. And I think there is some evidence to show that pregnant women don't understand fully what increased risk means or the range of things that they, are in, that they are going to be at increased risk for. They all know it's bad, but that's not enough knowledge. A further problem we have uh, is, the, is that negative and racist attitudes um, towards Māori or Indigenous women will affect whether or not they feel comfortable or come back to that service. And this is a... Um, rather stark example, uh, talking with a midwife and a leader of a maternity care service, and we were talking around, you know, hard to reach and how to get to pregnant mums. And one of the things she just said in the conversation was, oh, well, but you have to treat them. Sometimes you've got to grit your teeth. I don't like pedophiles, but I had to treat them. I was like, I mean, I nearly cried. I mean, how could you think about our women in, in the same, and put them in the same sentence as thinking about a pedophile. There, is, there are some people with deeply racist attitudes to Māori and Indigenous women, and I want them to just stop working with our women. Our women will sense that, and they won't go to that service, and sometimes they don't have a choice. So that's the only service they can go to. They will go there only when they have to, and they will not get support uh, if they don't go. So how then are we to reduce smoking while pregnant? We must trigger quit attempts repeatedly throughout pregnancy. If they don't do it the first time, you've just got to keep trying the whole way through. And the evidence suggests that even stopping in last trimester, there will be important benefits. We must increase the provision of effective cessation support, including uh, the offer of intermittent nicotine replacement therapies, that's the gum lozenge quick mist, is proving quite popular, uh, the inhalator, and if legal one day, I'll put that in there for you, Paul, from the ministry, uh, perhaps electronic cigarettes with nicotine. Uh, last year I worked with um, Alan and Clark and uh, Dr Marwick uh, and Hayden McRobbie uh, and we developed a best practice framework for dedicated pregnancy smoking cessation services. Now um, this is available on the ministry's website or directly from me. I won't go step by step, it's quite involved but it's very good and it's a world leader. The World Health Organisation are also working on such a framework. If you do deliver to pregnant women or you want to and uh, extend your service to be effective for pregnant women, please uh, get a hold of that report. So new approaches that, um, that my colleagues and I are trialling, and incentives have been tried before around the world in Scotland. We have a trial AFI incentives. Uh, there's also WERO. We've introduced a Hapunga Awahi Kori, a smoke-free pregnancy prize, into the group Stop Smoking competition. Uh, I've um, advised the Northland DHB, uh, we're, we're trialling an alliance, trying to get all key stakeholders together, and then for the hard to reach, we're trialling an Afi Aunties uh, project. So Afi Incentives uh, was a parallel group randomised controlled feasibility study, 
Uh, we unfortunately only managed to recruit 24 mums, and I did want 80, and that's a whole other presentation about, uh, about the trouble of recruiting pregnant mums into research. So we had eight per group. We've got a group that got no incentive. One group got $25, a $25 farmer's voucher for each week she abstained from smoking, and the third group a $25 uh, product pack for each week she abstained from smoking. I'm giving a presentation on this later, so that was just the ad. Come along later. <laughs> and um, Weddle is a group stop smoking contest, and the prize for pregnant mums, what we're trying to do is encourage the whole whanau or, or for, for whanau teams to include a pregnant mum in the team. So it's not having teams of pregnant mums, it's having the network and including a pregnant mum and wrapping that support around her. She gets points for each week she doesn't smoke, she'll, get, she'll only get the prize at the end if she's not smoking at the end, and if she isn't smoking at the end, and she'll get extra points for everyone else in her team that's also not smoking at the end. So please see our stand out there for more information on that one. The Northland Alliance uh, brought together key stakeholders in the community, people working with or with access to pregnant mums, and uh, just to improve their networking uh, and to discuss how they can better interventions for pregnant mums. So that report is available from Northland DHB on how that alliance went. Now getting to hard to reach, hard to reach. This is women who do not confirm pregnancy through health services or they delay registration with a, a midwife uh, and they're less likely to interact with the health system, um, considerably less likely to access stop smoking medications. So for that we're trialling auntie, an auntie's project. Could community health workers in the community help find the pregnant mums early and get support to them? Uh, there's a poster out there on this, so I'll just skip ahead because I'm getting the, the nod. Why do pregnant women smoke? It's addictive. They are healthy and fit, and they, they don't experience the ill health effects of smoking. Smoking is the norm. Unfortunately, Paul, for Māori, the smokers are not pushed to the periphery. They happen to be whoop, in there, and that network's still smoking. For these women, it's the norm and 67% live with someone who smokes. It's very hard to stop smoking while everyone else smokes. I was at a hui. Now, I'm not fluent in te reo Māori, in Māori language. I thought the kaumātua said he was talking in Māori. I thought he said this. When one of us is pregnant, all of us are pregnant. Even if he didn't say it, I think it's a really excellent saying. And so I've adopted it anyway. And I think that's the message we need to get out, like the village. Um, we need to get everybody involved in taking responsibility. We need to develop innovative marketing to trigger quitting among pregnant women and her family members and friends. Uh, they need to quit with her. Please check out the Te Tai Tokiro smoke-free ads, which are just disseminated virally on YouTube. We need innova innovative cessation interventions that are attractive, acceptable, and accessible for Māori women, uh, especially the younger ones and the, the, middle, the childbearing age who are pregnant. We need to urgently focus on reducing the smoking prevalence of women of, of childbearing age. So we've got to drop that background smoking prevalence across the whole group. Kia ora koutou. Thank you very much.